In this video, we're going to look how to make a simple building system in order to place down buildings in the world. This is a freeform system, so you don't need any kind of underlying grid. Just select the building type and click to place. Let's begin! Alright, so let's look at how to implement a really nice building system. Now what we're going to do here is similar but more simplified version to what I cover in depth in my Complete Builder Defender course. The course is 10 hours long with over 15 lectures nicely organized into distinct topics. It teaches you everything on how to make a game starting completely from scratch until the final polished game. The lectures are presented as clear step-by-step -step tutorials just like my normal videos. It teaches you how to make a building system, resource management, enemy AI, world building, post-processing, polish, and much, much more. So if you're looking for a guided step-by-step -step course making a complete game from start to finish, then check the link in the description to pick up the course. Okay, so here let's make a nice building system. Now the goal is to be able to click on the world and place a building on the mouse position. So let's start off by making a new c -sharp script, name it our building manager, and let's make an empty game object, name it the same thing, and attach the script onto it. Okay, now here we want to spawn a building on the mouse click. So let's first make a simple private void update, and we'll listen to input get mouse button down. Then here it takes the button, so let's put zero for the left mouse button. All right, so we press the left mouse button, and now in here we want to spawn it on top of the mouse world position. So we need to get the mouse position, and that we can get from the utilities, which is always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So using codemonkey.utils, and then down here we just access the utilities class and get the mouse world position. Here is the function in case you want to make it yourself. So all it really does is it takes the main camera, does a screen to world point on the input.mouse position. So it does that, and we've got the mouse world position. All right, so this is a vector three for the mouse world position. And now here we want to spawn a building. So we're going to instantiate a building prefab. Let's go up here to add a film for it. So make it a serialized film so we can set it in the editor of a transform. And let's get the PF wood harvester. So we get that field and in here we call instantiate. Instantiate that one on the mouse world position and without any rotation, so quaternion.identity. All right, so we have our very simple script. Let's test. Here in the editor, just drag the prefab reference and hit play. Okay, here we are and click. And yep, there you go, it spawned indeed our prefab. So wherever I click, I spawn the prefab right on the mouse world position. All right, awesome. Okay, so now that we can click to place on a building, let's look into placing different types. Now for defining the type of building, we're going to use scriptable objects. I cover them in detail in another video, so check that out for a more in-depth look. Essentially, scriptable objects allow you to create assets in your project files to contain any data that you want. We're going to use it to define the various building types. This is also the same method that I use in the complete course. So let's make our scriptable object. Just create a new C-sharp script. Name this the building type SO. SO for scriptable object. Okay, and now in here we get rid of mono behavior and instead we extend scriptable object. So you do that and now in here we can define any data that we want. In this case, all we want is to define a field for the building prefab. So a public transform for the prefab. Okay, so that's all the data we want for now. And then let's create a create asset menu so that we can actually create our asset. Again, if you want to learn more about scriptable objects, go check out that other video link in the description. All right, so back in the editor, let's make a new folder for our building types. So a new folder for the building types. And now inside, let's right click, go into create, and yep, we have our building type scriptable object. So just click on it, name this the wood harvester, and there you go, we have the prefab, and over here, just drag that reference. All right, so now I'm just going to make all the other ones. All right, so that's it. All of our various types as scriptable objects, each of them with a different data. Okay, so far so good. Now we need to decide which type we want to place. So let's go back into the building manager. And in here, let's add the building type scriptable object field for the active building type. So a private building type SO for the active building type. And then down here, instead of grabbing from this testing, we can get rid of that one. Instead, we go in there and we access the prefab. Okay, so that should do it. Now let's also make this a serialized field so we can set the starting one in the editor. And let's test. Okay, we have our field. And for example, let's drag the tower and hit play. Okay, here we are and click, and if there you go, we can still place an object, but now it grabs the prefab from the scriptable object. And if I pause the scene, and in here swap out the active building type, let's say select the HQ, and then unpause the scene, 
and now click on it and yep there you go now it's spawned a different building so you can see how useful sort of objects are all we need to do is really just change that field and we change what building we spawned okay so all we need to do is some way of selecting which type we want to build so for that let's make some buttons up here i have my normal ui canvas so first let's make a new game object name this the building type select ui and let's stretch it to occupy the whole thing so stretch and zero 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 okay now inside let's make a button so first make an empty game object for the container for the button then on this container let's add the button component and for now let's not change anything then inside let's add a ui image this will be our background and i have a simple button background texture okay let's make it stretch to occupy the whole parent all right next let's duplicate this for our image and this one will be the image on the button so for example down here select the wood harvester and make it a tiny bit smaller and make sure we preserve the aspect ratio all right so we have our single button now let's name the object to the building button template and on this one let's anchor it on the lower left corner and let's put it almost in there okay so that looks good and there it is in there now the reason why i give it this name is because we're going to work with it as a template meaning we are going to duplicate this button to spawn as many types as we want so let's make the script to handle this window so make a new c sharp script for the building type select ui and here just drag the script okay now in here let's dynamically build all of our buttons so first we need to know what buttons we want to build so let's start off by making a list of all of our building type so so building type so list so we have the list of all the building types and let's make this a serialized field so we set it in the editor and back in the editor we have the list and let's just drag all of them so let's drag all of them and put them in order so first the wood then the stone then the gold then the tower and then the hq all right we have our nice list now here just do a private void awake and on awake let's cycle through our list and now on the list we want to duplicate the template so let's first grab it so we grab it and now let's first hide it so that the original template is hidden so this one game object dot set active into false okay so this is the original template and then down here we call instantiate and we're going to instantiate the original template instantiate onto this parent and this is the new building button then with it the first thing that we do is game object set active into true and now we need to position them so let's go into this building button transform to get the component of type rect transform and we're going to modify the anchored position and now here let's shift it to the right for each of them so let's keep track of a simple index so we've got our index we cycle through at the end we increase the index and in here let's simply always move it to the right so do plus equals on the index times a certain size let's try out just with something like 60. so every single building type will be shifted to the right by 60 units okay so that handles the position next we need a sprite for this button so let's first find our image and we get the component of type image which is up here using unity engine.ui so we get the image and then we set the sprite and now here we need the sprite for this button so we're going to grab it from the building type so and then we need to grab a sprite so let's go to the definition to add it so here it is a scriptable object we have the prefab and now a public for the sprite for the actual building sprite all right now let's just set this field on all of them so here it is we've got that field and just click and select the sprite and there you go same thing for all of them all right they all have the sprites and the last thing that we need to add is just the click behavior so for that we go into the transform we get the component of type button and then we go into the click and we add a listener okay so let's add a listener now in here i'm using a anonymous lambda expression now if you're not familiar with them then go check out the video on delegates essentially this is a function with no parameters and then in here we have our code body so when we click on this button then this is going to run and what we want to do is simply select this building time for construction so up here let's also add a reference to the building manager so serialize field for the building manager okay we have that reference let's set it in the editor 
So there it is, and just drag this game object. Okay, good. And now in here, we want to tell the building manager to use this specific type. So let's make a function to receive that. So over here, let's make a public void set active building type, and we receive a building type as so. And we simply set the active building type to this building type. All right, so that's it. And back in here, we just go into the building manager and we call set the active building type and pass in this building type. Okay, so that's really it. Let's test. Okay, so here we are. And by default, if I click, it should place a wood harvester. So click. Yep, there you go. It does work. Now down here, we have the buttons. Let's click on this one to select the stone harvester. So click. And right away, we have the issue that it's placing a building through the UI, but let's ignore that for now. So now it should be selecting the stone harvester. And if I click, yep, there you go. It did spawn down. Now you're here, select the gold and spawn that one, select the tower and spawn that one, select the HQ and spawn that one. All right, so with this, we can now select which building type we want to build. Awesome. Now let's just quickly add a visual for the selected type. So over here on the button template, let's duplicate the background, call it the selected. And now inside, select this other sprite. So I have in here just a white outline and let's just put it just on white. Okay, so that looks good. Now back in the code, let's make a function to update the selected visual. So private void update selected visual. And now in here, what we do is we cycle through all of the buttons. So for that, we need to keep track of the references that we are constructing in here. So let's store them in a dictionary. So we've got dictionary and in here we initialize dictionary. And then down here, we set dictionary on the key for this building type. We set it to this building button transform. All right, so now we have the dictionary with all of our buttons. And then down here, we simply cycle through it. We cycle through all the keys. We access the building button dictionary on this particular key. Then we find the selected child. And we get the game object that's set active into false. So first we hide all of them. And then all we need to do is set the active one to be active. So let's expose that in the building manager. So in here, just say public return a building type SO, get the active building type. And just return the active building type, okay. And now here, just go into the building manager. In order to get the active building type, So we get the active building type and set the selected back into visible. All right, now all we need to do is call this function. So let's make a private void start and on start, we update the visual. And then in here, after we click the select the building, let's also update it. Okay, so that's it, very simple. Now let's test. So here and right now, the wood harvester is selected. Now click on this one. Yep, that one is selected. Now that one, now that one, and that one. So the stone harvester is selected. And if I click, yep, there you go. It does place a stone harvester. All right, so it's working. Now let's fix the issue with clicking through the UI. So the thing is over here on the building manager, all we're testing is if the input dot get mouse button, if the mouse button is down. So if so, then we are spawning it. Now we need to make sure that the mouse button is down and it is not on top of the UI. So for that, we can add a using unity engine dot event systems. And then we can access the event system in order to grab the current event system. And then we have the function is pointer over game object. So we're only going to spawn if the mouse button is down and it is not over a game object. So that's all we need. Let's test. Okay, so here we are. And if I click on the button, yep, there you go. It does not spawn a building. So the clicks are no longer going through the buttons. So I can select this one and place this on harvester, select it and place that one and place that one and place that one. And yep, everything works. All right, awesome. Now, just for fun, let's add a visual and a simple construction timer. So over here, I've got two types of prefabs. So there's the normal buildings that have already been built. And there's these ones which are going through construction. So let's use these ones instead. First on the building type definition, let's add another transform. This will be the construction prefab. And here, let's set all the references. Okay, they're all set. And in here on the building manager, when we instantiate, instead of instantiating the prefab, let's instantiate just the construction prefab. All right, so just like this, we should be instantiating a different prefab. Let's see. Here we are and click. And yep, there you go. There's the building being constructed. It's using the super awesome construction shader and it gets built slowly over time. And as soon as it's done, some particles and it spawns the final building. Now I cover the construction shader in detail in another video. So check the link in the description to learn more. 
It was fully made in Shadowgraph and it's super adaptable. You can modify the number of segments. For example, that one is slowly printing with 10 segments. But if I go over here on the material and let's change from 10 segments to 30, and I'll spawn, and yep, there you go. Now it's printing a lot faster and a lot more segments. So it's a really awesome shader and go check out the other video to see how it all works. So here is the construction prefab, which as you can see, is just a simple sprite using that material, which uses that custom shader, and then just has a simple construction script. So here it is, just has a field for the constructed building prefab, another one for the particles, then a simple timer, and on update, it's constantly increasing the timer. It's setting a property on that material shader. And once it's past a certain amount, then it instantiates the particles as well as the final building prefab. So a very simple script just to spawn a building after a certain amount of time. Okay, so with this, we added a nice fun visual for our buildings. So they get nicely constructed. And after a while, yep, there you go, they get done and the buildings are spawned. All right, great. Now let's also add some rules. So right now we can, for example, spawn buildings right on top of each other. That is obviously not meant to work like that, so let's fix it. The way we're going to fix that is by using the physics system. So the first thing we need is to add a collider to all of our buildings. So let's go, for example, inside the wood harvester. Here it is, and on the parent game object, just add a simple box collider 2D and just set the widget in order to occupy the whole thing. Okay, so there it is. So this is the area that will be occupied by this building. Now all I need to do is just apply this to all the prefabs. And also apply it to the construction prefabs. Alright, so all the objects have their colliders. Now let's go into the building manager. And here let's make a function to test if we can spawn. So a private ball can spawn building and receives a building type SO for the building that we want to spawn. Then we also get a vector 3 for the position where we want to spawn. Now in order to test if we can spawn, we need to first test that this position is clear. However, we need to test more than a single point since the building itself has a shape. So for that, we can go into the building type SO in order to find the construction prefab. And then we do get component of type box collider 2D. Okay, so we have the building box collider. Next, we go into the physics 2D. And here we can access the function overlap box. So this one will test if a certain box would overlap with any objects in our world. So now we just need the point, and the point will be this position where we want to spawn, plus whatever offset the box collider has, so the building box collider, and we access the offset. Then we need the size, so the building box collider access the size, and lastly the angle, we don't want any rotation, so just put it at zero. And in here we cannot combine a vector 3 with a vector 2, so just convert this one into a vector 3. Alright, so that's it, now this one returns a collider 2D, so it's going to return something if the space is occupied. So if this returns something different from null, then the space is occupied, so we return false. If it is not, then that means that it is null, so this space is empty, so return true. All right, so that's it. And all we need to do is go all the way up here. So we test left mouse button down, test not over the UI, and then we test if we can spawn a building, pass in the active building type, then pass in the mouse wrong position. And if we can't spawn the building, then we spawn the building. All right, that's it. Let's test. Okay, so here, I'll let's place. And yep, it worked. Now let's place another one on top of it. And nope, cannot do it. This position is now occupied. And if I place it right outside of the collider, nope, still doesn't work because it's not testing just for the mouse position, but rather the shape that I'm trying to build. So I need to go a bit more to the side. And yep, there you go. Now it does place one next to it. All right, so we added a very simple rule to not place buildings on top of each other. Great. Now over here, I also have a simple rock and a simple tree sprite. They also have colliders, so they should work to block buildings from being placed on top of them. So I'm just going to populate the world with a bunch of these. All right, now let's test and see if they work. Okay, so here I am in the world, and now if I click on top of the stone, Nope, there you go, cannot place since the area is occupied. I need to place around it, and yep, there you go, in there it's a valid position. Same thing over here, so just select something, try to click it, nope, can't do it, gotta go to the side, and yep, now it works. Alright, so here we have added the rule that we cannot spawn on top of an object, it needs to be placed on clear ground. Right, awesome. Now let's add another rule where the buildings cannot be insanely far from something else. So for example, when making an RTS game, you usually cannot place a building here and then go all the way to the edge of the map and place another one in there. 
So let's add that. Here in the building manager, it's very simple. We just had that new rule over here on the same can building function. First, let's rename our overlap box here to make the code more clear. So let's define a bool for is area clear. And we set it to this. So we have bool is area clear and we do an overlap box and the area will be clear if this one returns null. And then here, if not is area clear. So if the area is not clear, then return false. All right, otherwise we keep going in here. Then we add our second rule. And what we want to do is test to make sure that there's a building within range. So for that, instead of the overlap box, we can do a physics 2D and use a overlap circle. So this is pretty much the same thing, except it just takes a point and a radius. We can use our position as the point. And now for the radius, let's define a float for the max building radius. And let's put some value. Okay, so now this one will return a collider if there is one within this radius of this position. However, for this one, we're going to have to validate and see which objects are inside of this radius. So instead of this version, which just returns the first object, we're going to use the overlap circle all, which returns all of the objects within range. So let's store them. And then we cycle through it. And now here we need to test and see if any of them is a building. So in order to identify, let's add a simple building script to all the buildings. So for that, let's just make a new C-sharp script, name it a building, and let's leave the script completely empty. We're essentially just using this as a tag. So just go into all the building prefabs and attach the building script, okay. Now here we cycle through all of them, then we go into this collider and we call get component and we try to get the building component. So we test if it does not return null, if it is not null, then this one has a building. So if it has a building, then that means there's a valid building within range. So we return true and we can build. And if we get all the way down here, then we did not find any building within range. So we just return false. All right, so that's pretty much it. However, with this, you can already imagine that we have a problem, which is in order to place on a building, we must have a building within range. So that means that we have no star building, then we can never place anything. So to solve that, let's simply start off with a star building. So let's just use the HQ, put it on zero, zero, and there you go, this is our star building. Now let's test. Okay, so here we are, and right away, let's try moving all the way over here and try to click. And nope, cannot do it. I cannot place it in there since it's way too far from the actual building that we have. However, if I try to place it a bit closer, say around here, click, and yep, there you go, it does work. So if I try to place it way too far, can do it. And if I want to reach there, then I simply have to place various buildings until I get there. So just place buildings every certain amount of space. And if I click, yep, there you go, now I can place it in there. So with this, we added a rule for an expanding building area, just like you see in many RTS games. So we have added yet another very important base building rule. All right, awesome. Okay, so over here, we have our fully functioning building system. We can use these buttons to select which building type we want to construct. Then when we place down a building, we can see it being constructed with this awesome shader effect. And when the construction is done, the final building gets actually spawned. And we add rules to our building placement. So naturally they cannot be spawned on top of each other or on top of objects. And they also cannot be spawned way too far away from each other. And as you can see, this building system is not based on any underlying grid. So it's a really nice freeform system allowing you to build bases and cities in any shape you want. So here it is, a really nice Bailey's building system that you can expand upon to make an RTS or a city builder or any genre that involves placing down buildings. Now, like I said, what we built here is a more simplified version of what I cover in the course. In there, I go into a lot more detail onto these various elements like the building type scriptable object, the UI elements, the rules for placement, the building construction, and so on. So if you want to see a step-by-step -step guide on how to make a complete game from start to finish, check out the complete course linked in the description. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.